And Rick Dalton joins us now, welcome. Thank you. You came up with this concept while you were at Middlebury College. That was about Correct. 20 years ago. Uh, 22 years ago. Did you see students coming to college who weren't prepared or did you encounter students who didn't go to college and, and you, you realized that, uh, that more should be done to help them? What, what, what was it that you saw that? Uh, well, it was less at Middlebury College. And I mean, Middlebury College students typically are, uh, they test well, they, they, they are very literate. Right. Um, do have done very well, continue to do very well, don't have the same needs that you see with really students across the country. Um, part of it was a, my work in graduate school and my doctoral work focused on helping low-income kids and specifically Latinos go to college. And I had an opportunity uh, while studying at Harvard to really look at what was happening and came back to Middlebury once I finished my degree and set up diversity uh, committees in, in various cities around the country to see if we could help raise the diversity at Middlebury College. And it was clear that uh, at that point, and, and uh, I certainly knew it, but I began to live it, that we really have two, two worlds, educational worlds in this country. There's a, a world for uh, upper middle and high income kids, and then the, the rest of the kids and there's a huge divide in terms of really their college readiness, um, their ability to get to college, and, and frankly, their ability to stay in college. And if you look at national statistics, that divide has widened every year, every single year since 1980. And you can measure that in terms of um, college going, college graduation, uh, high school graduation, uh, test scores, virtually any measure, and it's, it's all about income. And so I saw what was happening, and it was, you know, I mean, it's a crisis in our country because, um, among other things, the fastest growing cohort of young people uh, is that cohort of low income kids. And right now, 35% of our students in, in public schools um, live at or below the poverty line. In 15 years, half the kids in the United States will live at or below the poverty line. So there's a, it's a crisis that will, um, af it certainly affects education, but this goes way beyond education. How many students are you helping and, and how many schools and colleges are you working We're with? We're working with 20,000 students in 200 schools in 24 states. Mm. And we have 200 uh, colleges that partner with us and help us. Um, Two of those colleges are, are right here in Plattsburgh in the North Country, Clinton Community College and SUNY Plattsburgh. They have supported and helped and are really part of this, uh, this mission to help low-income students be successful. For so many years, I would imagine that many students didn't think about college until they got well into high school years, junior, senior year, then they would start thinking about it. For some, it may have been too late already academically. Others aren't prepared for the rigors when they get to college. How are you helping these students specifically get ready earlier for college and sure. actually get into college? What they need is they need to become uh, literate about financial aid, mm -hmm. literate about admission, uh, literate about what it's going to take in terms of the, the rigor so that they can succeed. So that's where we step in and that's what we do. We provide really three different practices or activities that help lift up our students. And really, we begin with, and, and as is the need in this country, let's give our students the opportunity to see the dream. So hope, raise the aspirations, and then raise performance. So our, our practices are mentoring. Every one of our 20,000 students has a mentor. Uh, our second practice is Pathways to College. And every one of our students gets on a college campus, becomes uh, college literate becomes part of a college culture, and that focuses on admissions, on financial aid, again, what it takes to be successful. And the third practice is leadership through service. We think that young people need to be leaders, and as such, leadership begins with oneself. So we ask our students to get their own acts together, to become leaders. Those three practices are uh, what have helped our young people, and we've worked with almost 100,000 over the last 22 years, get on that track to college. And you've had quite a success rate. Um, 
our students have done extraordinarily well. And over the last six years, 96% of the kids in our program, and we're talking almost entirely low-income students, but 96% of our kids have gone to college. People may automatically assume that we're talking urban areas primarily, but you help both urban and rural areas, including schools right here in the North Coast. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, we are the only national nonprofit that helps um, rural students get on that path to college. There are no other national nonprofits that do that. So about a, a quarter of our portfolio, our students, are from rural communities. We moved to Essex, New York two years ago, and part of that is to um, really make a statement to show people our commitment to rural students. With the skyrocketing tuition cost, probably a number of families assume that, that it's out of reach for them. So as, along with the, the mentoring, the, the academics, the developing, the leadership skills, you work with them on finding ways to be able to afford college as well? We, we help them, and again, it's, you know, it begins with the, the FAFSA and understanding how to fill out financial aid forms and understanding that you have to fill out that financial aid form so that you're going to be in the, in the game to get the money. So we want our students to know in those elementary years it, certainly in those middle school years, what the FAFSA mean, what it's going to, what means, what it's going to take in terms of paying for college, uh, scholarships, financial aid, mm -hmm. loans, you know, where are those dollars? Rick Dalton, thank you very much for taking the time to step by and talk with us. Thank you, Tom.